You ever smoke Charm? Nah. Oh, dust? Yeah. Yeah, I smoked dust three times in my life. <laughs> what, what, what was the situations like? Oh, man. <laughs> I smoked dust on You're like, like an um, original member of Wu Tang. You did? You ever did <laughs> dust with RZA? <laughs> yeah, I was with RZA smoking dust on new lots. <laughs> I don't even want to kick it with RZA yeah. unless we could do some dust. Bro. Yeah, that's a fact. If Sherm we, blunts. We if we out, can't yeah. smoke dust with RZA and buy gold on Canal Street, mm. like I don't really want to do that. That's a real RZA. I don't want to talk about life and shit like. No, I, I do, but under the influence of I want to talk Sherm. about life, but I also don't want to wear like karate silk mm. three in the morning. Maybe I want to do what I want. Nah, I mean he loves a good silk. Right. Nothing wrong with that. What would you say if you met Trump? If I met Trump? If you met Trump, you walk up to Trump, you got a couple minutes with him at the bodega, what kind of conversation are you going to engage him in? Nah, the first thing, I would just spit on the floor and then just look at him up and down. And then I would tell him straight up, like, uh, you know, what you claiming? Where you from? <laughs> you know Where what I mean? Where you from? He's <laughs> like, I'm from here. Yo, so who brought you home? <laughs> It's just weird nah, that to man, a lot would, of people, nah. that's new. That's a New Yorker. Nah, but I would never that's a New be Yorker. Like, nah, I would just be like, you know, basic shit. Like, yo, uh, where you get your weed from? Mm. Yo, where you get your shape-ups? And well, why you mad pussy? Mm. And then, like, I really don't have much to say. You know what I mean? We joking around right now. This, leave but, TikTok alone. Yeah, leave TikTok alone, man. Mm. Leave people alone, man. Just leave the whole life alone. But you, you, you should just leave life alone, man. That's a New Yorker right there. Like, some people like, ain't good at life. You and him are not, like, I'm not saying you're like him, but the energy that you guys have, like, I feel like you'll still be going at a Trump-like rate when you're 70, because that's one thing that amazes you know me makes, about him. But you he's know what 70 and he's though? going. You know what amazes me the most? It's not even that he is who he is and saying what he's saying, because we all, we've been known how people like him think, you know mm. what I'm saying? Certain types of people, you know? So it's like, when you're hearing this, it's like, it's crazy, but... The shit that makes me crazy and like fucked up is like, yo, how is this shit being okay? It's being let, let go. Mm. Like nobody's just saying no. Right. Like, yo, nah, this, this can't happen. Like, you know, that's scary. It ain't like him. <clears throat> because you're going to tell me all the past presidents didn't share some thoughts that he shares? Mm. Come on. They just didn't, you know, they didn't project that. After. You know what time it is, man. Like he just, he states his mind. That's one thing about him. But at the end of the day, that shit is dangerous, man. It's poisonous, you know? There's a, uh, a tweet I'm looking for right now. A tweet of, looking of for? Something that My he tweets? said, no, of his, that mm. um, I'm not sure if I'm able to find it right away. He had, it was like the craziest thing I ever seen him say. Basically saying, like, America, you won't mm-hmm. have to worry about uh, low income people moving into your areas or whatever. <laughs> like, it was the craziest, most racist thing that I think I had ever seen him stay say publicly of basically just like assuring more well-off people that they won't have to worry about low-income people moving into their areas and it was just somebody should look it up and actually read this tweet but it was sad i i i I, I could not believe my eyes when i read it yeah because you're seeing that and you like yo how come this shit ain't getting people like you know like pro how come people ain't flipping out because you got to also remember when you labeling people low income Mm. if you go into a neighborhood that's considered low income because I don't even know that's that's bullshit. Mm. When you say like yo, this is a low income neighbor, you rich in you move in rich high income people, you making it low income. You understand? Mm. Some people have been there was already middle class, but if you raise the rent double triple, and then you raise the residents like that come in there with a higher salary, of course you just made them lower income. Mm. You understand? How about, you how do, create incomes. You, you create levels. How has gentrification changed? Like you know the area you grew up in, and it has. Have you witnessed it? I, well, I tell you like this: in the Bronx, not as much though. Right. Where I grew up in the Bronx, no. Like on Davidson Avenue, like it's still, it's still wild. You know, people still throwing shit off the roof. Uh. It's three in the morning situations. That's just what that is. You know, I think like the Bronx is like ungentrifiable. You know, they they're out there pockets. You know, like like three, four people, but they'll run off the train right into the building at night. Mm. Like, they'll go upstairs and sniff their coke with their eyes closed by themselves. You know what I mean? Like, they're not going to be hanging out in the corner. Right. So they just like, ah, no doubt. You know, like, they might see them at the store. But, like, in Brooklyn, yeah, they out there now. Like, in East New York, they, they moving. You'll just see, like, three in the morning, like, 13 German people walking. It's like, oh, shit. German right. people? Yeah. Just... Living just life. random speaking German. Just moved into the neighborhood. Yeah, they but they cool though. They doing their thing. They ain't even fucking with nobody. Right. My thing is this: it's not really about like who's moving in and who lives there. It's about who's blending in and who's not making an issue. Mm. If you come in, who's to say, yo, 
where are you from? You know, like, what's your culture? What's your nationality? What race? You know, like, nobody's doing that at the border. You know what I'm saying? Right. But we just try to say, like, don't come in somewhere and try to change what's already good. Right. You know, you, you know what I'm trying to say? That's the stuff that really boils my blood when you hear about the people moving to certain areas in Brooklyn. And they, oh, they, and they the cops start on their compl- neighbors. They, they complain do everything. about the fucking noise yeah. from people who've been but playing music But they'll say what's up to you and then years. call the cops on you. Mm. I know what time it is. They make sure you're home. So they're like, oh, they just said, what up? Now they call the cops. Right. Then they're going to say, I'm not sure, but I might have seen a gun. I seen some. Come on. Right. That's how, <clears throat> that's how it goes. Right. But my thing is this, man. You just got to be aware. Once you got the knowledge and you know what's going on around you, you don't have to accept it, but at least you know you're aware. You're not surprised, you know? Uh-huh. You're not going to get caught up. You can't slip if you always got your Tims on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's That's like, some real New York advice right there. It's true. Right. It's like even, like, you know, it doesn't really matter where I'm at or what, what part of life I'm in right now. You know what I'm saying? It's always going to be the same morals, the same foundation. Still getting some pussy with your Tims on? Always. Really? Always. Because, yo, it's crazy. <laughs> it's just like, you know, I could be in France. Mm. I could be in Belgium, Morocco, Pelham Parkway. I'm always going to be somewhere, you know, like the same body. Mm. I have to, man. I got to move the same. Now, <clears throat> my thing is this. Some people are just like, you know, they get a little bit of fame or some, you know, success and they just, they changes them. It's like, we call that like lawsuit money in the hood. Like, yeah, you got bread, but we don't really respect it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, he hit, you know, he got some lawsuit or got a, you know, some leftover, some money from his moms or something, you know, we don't disrespect it and hate on it, but we don't really respect the shit. Like, you know, like, yo, you know, it's not the same. Right. It's when you earned it, you sweated for it, you risked yourself for it. So it's like, you know, it's a little bit of both sides, you see. Mm. It's like people want to be one foot in, one foot out. Me, my mind is gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been too long. I'm still out there. I'm still just, and when I say out there, I just mean like <clears throat> my surroundings are the same. I'm in the same neighborhood. I've been had bread. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been successful. Like, music didn't make me successful. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I've always been known for going to get mine. It's like, you know, like everything you hear me say, it comes from stories. It comes from truth, you know? And that's just what it is. Like, you see me, I've been out for mad long. I've been on all over. I've talked crazy. I am the way I am, you know? I've been all over. Ain't nobody gonna call me out. I always give you details where I'm from. I don't talk like these rappers that come up here and give you these fucking, oh, I'm from all over. But where are you from? Like, oh, I rep the whole city. Mm. Oh, I represent New York as a whole. Oh, I'm from here. No, no, I give you detail. You wanna know where I'm from? And I'm th- like, right now I got a documentary coming out. And I'm also doing some shit with Complex, like a day in the life, but I'm doing like a week in the life. I'm going to show you for real, you know? Because uh-huh. I love giving people the details. I don't like people who speak indirect, you know what I'm saying? Right. I want to show you. The details like what are what's important. Yeah. yeah, the corners, like the actual places that define me, Big Body Best. Because that's <clears> not like a name I created for the industry. That's who I was before this. You know, I came in as body. Mm. That's just who I am. There's a reason why, like, everything, because if anybody could just come on the track and talk some shit, yeah. but is it really verifiable? There's is something it, about that New York experience that keeps you It just is, man. I'm telling real. you. It's my heart. Like, I speak with pain in my heart. Even when I'm speaking with comedy, like, it's pain in there. You know what I mean? Like, but there's just, there's also righteousness. Like, I speak like a warrior. You know what I'm saying? Like, even this, like, my whole thing is, like, I don't mind speaking on my losses because my losses are what made me a fucking winner. You know what I mean? Mm. That's the truth. Like, these aren't just things I say to sound ill or speaking. Like, that's how I think. Like, I think in statements. You know what I'm saying? Like, my mind is like that. That's just how I've always been. Like, it's like a thing. Like, I don't know. It's like a lot of, like, Albanians speak like that. You know what I mean? They always speak, like, with wisdom. Mm. It comes from, like, the old towns. You know what I mean? Like, the mountains. Like, everybody would have to, like, because, you know, you're living off the land. You know what I'm saying? Some people are just more, like, untouched by society. You know what I mean? Mm. So you got to have the wisdom. Especially when you come from like a warrior land, you know, you got to always watch your back, you know, from being invaded, you know what I mean? So it's like history repeats itself. It's like, you know how you might be, you might be from a land of war, you know what I'm saying? You used to people invading your land, the enemy coming. It's the same thing in the hood. You watching out for the D's jumping out, that's the enemy. And then you running, you know, they got their gun, you might have something sharp on you <laughs> and you go into war. Toothbrush. Yeah. Well, I'll, um, trust me, I go to war with anything. <laughs> And I say go to war, I just mean defend myself and defend my jewelry. Mm. I'm not saying like to start proms. Like, see, people getting confused. It's like, 
if you see me in the Heights somewhere uptown and I'm in a, you know, like in a lobby 86 deep and nobody's speaking English, that's not because like, you know, something negative is going on. That's because I fell in love with leather and gold. <laughs> you understand what I'm trying <laughs> to say? Why. It's because AMG rims aren't cheap. Mm. This is why I try to tell you, like, it's not about material things, but it's about the things that bring you joy. You understand? Mm. Like, leathers on Fordham Road bring me joy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just what it is. Like, you know, like, going to the club and, you know, like, discussing matters, you know what I mean? Like, and just, you know, being around people. Or if I'm just on the block somewhere in a beach chair, you know, and we're just conversating, like, it doesn't have to be extravagant shit. It's just about, you know, who I'm with. You know, the time we have it. Uh. But sometimes it is fly shit. But sometimes it could just be in the neighborhood making a barbecue with somebody, you know? Right. Or like even getting into a brawl, you know, with some people, you know, like it lets you know you're still here. You know, because I like, I like people to know that I'm still touchable. You know what I mean? Like, I don't got, what, you think I'm in the bodyguards or some shit? Mm. You see, I came dolo. Why the fuck would I need a bodyguard when I, I look, look just, just like, like the, the motherfucking, motherfucking bodyguard. bodyguard? And that's real shit. Mm. If you scared to move alone, then brother, you just scared to live. Mm. Like I told people in the beginning, man, I'm down to die, but you're just scared to live. This is the problem. Like you fearing something that's gonna happen regardless, bro. Like I know it's like, it's like this, man. Like, you know, I've been, I've been like, you know, I always like like jewelry and like flashy things since I was young. You know what I'm saying? But I see some people like they go and buy these expensive watches and jewelry just to wear it like in Alpine, New Jersey, in their mansion. <laughs> right. Or to lock themselves and go wear it in the woods. Like you're standing in the middle of the forest with a chain and an Audemars, you know? Yeah. It's not really fun. Right. You know where you want to wear it at. There's no point in having it unless you're Because this is the truth. Out there. We want to be on the strip. Mm. You want to have expensive things in poor neighborhoods. <laughs> right. And we don't, you see, I'm just saying it in a way but it's the truth right? because that's how you stick out. It's like when I go and wear, like if I go throw on a crazy chain and my, my watches and brings and I go to Park Avenue, I go like somewhere like they laughing at you like mm. the fuck is with this guy? Like, but when I go uptown, it's, it's love, yo, it's fucking oh shit. You feel me? Right. It's a sense of like belonging. It's a sense of outdoing somebody. That's the problem, you know? Sometimes we get caught up in that. Right. Like we trying to outdo our brothers and sisters like, Yo, bro, you know, like, you're fucked up, but I'm not. It's like, you know? Another classic interview in the books. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and head on over to nojumper.com to support. Appreciate y'all.